Chapter 8, Palma. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock, Report Number 24. Testimony from Randomly Selected Citizen, Mr. Baron Lopez. In doing so, the Emmers were given money to steal our cars from us, to create this bullshit public cars market, this supposed commie commons for the greater good of the city. To hell with all of this. Abolish all taxes and this economic zoo. After Flora's announcement, Palma tried to bury himself in his studies. As much as he tried to focus on his textbooks, his mind drifted back to her. It was particularly difficult in the library where he and Flora used to spend their younger years. He felt guilty, and he knew that he needed to help. He had managed to find an old Mech Maneuvers volume that he thought she would appreciate. However, it wouldn't be enough. His parents would know what to do. He walked home for dinner as the sun hugged the horizon across the bridges that spanned the district of the penthouses. In the middle of the city, surrounding the Great Roundabout, were the city's tallest skyscrapers and most expensive apartments. Not entirely content with having to go down to the street level and mingle among the gridlock, the families of the penthouses connected the skyscrapers into a cluster, building malls, schools, and other amenities for themselves. As he walked past a flower store, he popped in to get his mother a bouquet of flowers. No occasion, just to say, I love you. His mother usually took it and set it on the windowsill in the kitchen. Lined with rows of colors and all manner of scents, he wandered through the aisles, uncertain of what to buy. A store attendant hovered around him. Palma still wasn't sure, but he wanted the man to stop following him. So he intently stared at the flowers in front of him, pretending to consider his options. He hoped he could walk more through the store, but it suddenly felt overwhelming. It's just some flowers, he convinced himself. He picked up a bouquet, confident that it was perfect. As he got closer to pay, he hesitated again and grabbed a different bouquet. He never knew what the best options were. He summarily paid, nodded thanks, and rushed towards their home. He arrived home to the smell of cooking fish. How was university? Tinu asked, turning his broad shoulders back from the food in front of him. The sunset peered through the window beyond. The usual. Nothing interesting happened? Nope. Tinu stopped, perplexed. Where did you get that? From the flower store. It's for mom. No, the book. Palma had forgotten it was under his arm. Oh, this? From the library. I didn't even know they had that. Me neither. It's for your cousin. Ah, uh, no, dad, it's for Flora. Tinu put down the utensils and turned down the cooking heat. Palma, we can't support Flora. Why not? With the noise in the kitchen, Palma's mother walked in. Her usually tightly wound ponytail was a bit looser. What's going on? She asked. She didn't even see the flowers. Clara, Palma got a training manual for Flora. Clara's face sank. We can't support Flora when your cousin is a candidate. Satella will win and he needs our support. Plus, I thought you stopped being friends with her. She has increasingly been a negative influence. Just because they aren't rich anymore doesn't mean she's now a bad person. Isn't she still hanging out with that trunk rat? S. What's his name? It's Esper, and he is also my friend. I don't understand why you hang out with them. Why don't you make friends at the social clubs on campus? I am still considering my options, Palma said. This is absurd, though. I'm an adult, and I shouldn't be told who my friends can be. I'm currently passing my degree with flying colors. There's literally nothing you can hold against me. Tinu and Clara exchanged glances as if they'd had conversations about this before. Clara continued, Palma, you are still under this roof, and that means you are still under our rules. When you are done, as per our agreement, you will join the city administration and help us do what's best for gridlock. If I want to, of course, Palma added. What else will you do? Clara asked. Become a trunk rat, I don't know. Palma, Tinu shouted. Fine, sorry, Palma responded. I just want to help. You can help by helping Gridlock. Then if we win, everyone wins. Palma took a deep breath. You're right, Mom, you're right. I'm going to my room, study some more. I'll return the book tomorrow. He picked up the book and shuffled towards his room, past the flowers that were still on the table. 
He could still hear the hushed conversation between his parents and pressed his ear against the door. Clara, we're going to chase our son away. He's a grown man. He needs to learn to do the right thing. He still acts like a teenager. Maybe it's because we never let him be a teenager. No one has that luxury anymore. We need to make sure this city survives. We don't have time. I'm tired of it, Clara said as she paced away from the kitchen. Clara, please come back. Clara. She turned around. I'll see what I can do about Palma, okay? A few footsteps later, Palma could hear them briefly kiss. Tinu, thank you. You know that the Mech Institute got asked by Parliament to submit an expert testimony on the raising of the tax rates? Clara, no. It's time, Tinu. It's time we made our mark. For too long have I been an analyst. I have done the policy research. I know what we need to do. I will request that I lead the statement. Uh, Okay, run me through this then. We both know that your brother has been throwing away our position in this city. The family's portfolio of cars have been dwindling for years. He's like the rest of these penthouses families, top heavy. They will all fall under their hubris, us included. This is the way we get the rest of the family on our side so we can get this entire city going in the right direction again. It just won't happen under your brother. Remember what it was about? Tax the gridlock, personal sacrifice, send out expeditions for hope. This gridlock is slowly but surely losing its purpose. It's literally being swallowed as we speak. It's empowering groups in this city who don't have the same shared goals in mind. People like Mason, promoting the development of mid-levels in the trunks. One day when the anomaly disappears and the superstorms come, no car will be able to drive anymore. We are burying ourselves. If we can raise the tax rates, yes, we will pay more taxes to the city. But ultimately, we will hamstring these trunk rats from absorbing everything and encasing this city in a concrete tomb. Higher taxes, higher turnover, less mid-level investment. There are many in this family that see that and want to steer it back to what the original goal was, but we can't because your brother keeps luring them away through his decadence. He is the one selling the cars. It all ends up the same. The trunks and the penthouses all just eventually indulging their last years away before the storms eventually destroy us. Pren is fine, he's not throwing it away. When the market is hot, you sell the cars. We have a strategy. You risk making a fool of us to the family if you... Always the same. Protecting your family. Never willing to do anything. I know that's a risk, but you have to take risks. Something you wouldn't know anything about. I take risks, take that back. Yeah, sure, Clara said, rolling her eyes. I take risks. I was the one that kissed you first, remember? Tinu said. No, God damn it. You're not going to steer this conversation away. This is it, Tinu. I'm doing this. I'm submitting the Mech Institute's policies to the legislators. If I succeed, we will gain more support from family and the city in getting rid of these trunk rats. I can't support that. I'm sorry. Not now. Then you leave me no choice, she said, storming off. Palma rushed away from the door onto his bed to avoid his mother seeing him. Wait, Clara, what does that mean? Tinu's voice reverberated after her. After that, it was silent. Palma sat on his bed, the duvet imprinted with a cartoon from his youth. His parents argued about tax rates, the city, parliament, policy. And while he was studying towards public administration, he only really cared at that moment about his childhood friend. He felt small and stupid. He took the manual and wanted to throw it out of his window, watching it fly away. That would have been nice, but it wasn't his. He considered his options, returning it or just going against his family's wishes and giving it to Flora. His mother seemed to be doing her own thing. After a silent family dinner, he came back to a text on his phone. It was Esper. Hey, I might need your help. We can help Flora, but it depends if you are available. Not a given that we will need you, but I have to know what my options are. Palma looked at the message. He still felt awful about finding the job to forge the application, and he wanted to make amends. He wasn't sure how. 
perhaps he could do something. Just something else that wasn't spent in front of a desk or on his cartoon bed. Hiya, I don't know what you're doing, but I want to help. Let me know what you have in mind. Ciao.